By default, we cannot keep a plugin window open if we try to open another plugin window unless we pin the plugin. So now this plugin window is pinned and if I open another plugin, the pinned plugin window will still stay here and notice that this one is not pinned. So if I try to open another plugin, the other one was gone. But if I hold down control and open another plugin, every plugin window will be in pinned state. Well, now that they are pinned, I'll have to close each one of them individually. Open up preferences and switch it into advanced mode and then go way down to the color section. In here, I'm gonna click on this drop down to show you that there are four presets already in here. So we do have something to get back to in case if we mess up some setting in here. But just to be sure, you can enter a new preset of our own to mess around with the colors and save it. Now in the search box, I'm gonna look for the word folder. And from the search results, we have track view, track folder, name, text. To change its color, we can click on this choose color and choose a color from here. Or we can adjust the hue here like that. If you haven't noticed yet, it's the color of the text in these track folders. I'm gonna increase the brightness a little bit like that and decrease the saturation so that it doesn't pop out too much. And by the way, if you want to go back to the default color of this particular name text, you can reset the spectrum here or click on this defaults. And now I'm gonna press OK. And once you look at that, easily identifiable track folders. The snap to scale feature is great and all, but it is not at all good to the eyes. I mean, it looks like this with the default colors. So we're gonna open up the preferences again. Oh cool, we are already in the colors tab with our custom preset selected. Now I'm gonna look for snap and then in here, we're gonna select snap to scale excluded rows. And all we had to do is just simply bring down this brightness slider. And there you go, much better. And press OK. What you're seeing here now is this file being opened inside Cakewalk by BandLab. Now in the same directory as the project file, we have this folder named audio and it's in this folder that Cakewalk creates copies of imported files and also it's the same place where Cakewalk stores recorded files of that project. Oh, and this folder can be accessed within Cakewalk by opening up the Cakewalk browser and going into the media and switching this to project audio folder. What we are seeing here will be the audio folder associated with the open project. Now let's imagine that we imported this many files or recorded these tracks while trying out different stuff. And once we were finalized and done with the project, the ideas that we tried out were deleted. Let me save this project. Even with the saving, every audio file that we ever worked with inside a project will remain in that audio folder. Yeah, it's still here. So once you're done with the project, especially before archiving it, I would suggest you to go to utilities and then click on clean audio folder. We have the project audio folder already here. And so we just have to click fine and press OK. And so these are all the files still remaining in the audio folder, which are not used in the project. We can select each file and click delete or simply click delete all to remove all the files. And if I press OK, it's gone. And I'm going to close this. Let's check the folder. I'm not sure why there are two recordings because there is only one track right now that was a recording in this project. Oh wait, I can see something. Yeah, it's this one. So yeah, one, two, three, four, four audio files. And that way you do not waste any storage. The modules that you keep in your control bar should most likely be a subjective choice. But I do have a suggestion which is this custom module and I do prefer it to be resized to large because that way we get 9 customizable buttons. Now there are certain things that I frequently do but are not frequent enough to be made into keyboard shortcuts like this normalize, reverse and transpose which can be found under process, transpose is already in here, then under apply effect we can find normalize and reverse. I like these options being available out in the open like this. As an example, I'm going to add this gain into this button. I'm going to right click and then go to menu items. Remember the path, it's under process, apply effect and gain. And there we have it. I'm going to remove it for now. These does not have to be filled with frequently used things. I also like to use it for reminding me of something, which is, let me show you. I'm going to go into menu items, utilities and clean audio folder. Now that this option is here. There's a higher probability that I will not forget to clean up the audio folder before I archive a project. I'm not sure if everything that I'm mentioning in this video can be considered a tip. 
I just wanted to include the things that I felt like an average Cakewalk user who is not into messing around the software is very likely going to miss. If you're finding this video useful, then leave a like so that it reaches to more Cakewalk users. And for the next example, I'm going to use one of my officially released tracks. So let's get back to it. I'm going to bring up the bus pane and expand one of the buses so that we can see the buttons here. And among these buttons, we have this one which, if enabled, will display waveform in here. Neat, huh? This can be really useful when you're trying to figure out how a kick is working with the bass by just soloing them and enabling the waveform preview of their buses. Here, by seeing this, we kind of have a better idea of how this kick is triggering the sidechain compression on the bass. Oh, and uh, this time difference between these waveforms? I think it's because of the latency. So I only turn on features like these when they actually do serve some kind of purpose. Otherwise, they remain turned off. This is where we can see the peak levels of these tracks. Now if I right click on the number and click on the go to peak option, the playhead will move to where the peak happened. Now we can actually see this in real time if we go to options, go under meter options and enable this show bus peak markers. Now these actually update in real time during playback. Now this feature is also available in the clips pane if we go to options meter options again and here we can see show track peak markers but there's a small issue as you saw it only worked in the audio tracks but in case of the instrument tracks that is the track with the instrument vst plugin the peak markers didn't show up so I'm going to turn all of that off now and instead I'm going to right click on one of the tracks to reveal the options and here you can see show peak marker. So every track has this feature individually which means I can select all of the tracks then right click on one of them and then select show peak marker. Now every track has peak markers enabled. <music> Also, to disable this, you have to select all of the tracks again, right click and disable there. If you are bringing track outputs into a Cakewalk project for mixing, then it might look something like this. And I know for a fact that there are so many silences in each of these tracks. So I'm gonna select all of the audio clips with Ctrl A, then in the process menu, go to apply effect and select remove silence. Make sure we have the lowest value here which is minus 96 with zero attack time and a little bit of look ahead and keep this split clips enabled and then simply hit OK. And after the processing is done, we have a much better understanding of what's going on with the audio just by looking at the clips pane, aka the timeline itself. In order to automate a parameter in a plugin, you don't have to go through a huge list like this from the automation dropdown or even search up the parameter from this window. Instead, we stay in the plugin window and enable this W switch here, which is automation right. And then we get to the parameter that we want to automate and then we simply change it after hitting playback. As you saw, Cakewalk added the automation lane for us. Now once you have the automation lanes for all the parameters that you want, make sure that you turn this off. Anyway, once that's here, you can change its value the way you want it. But if you're bothered with the automation lane being superimposed on top of the track itself, you can try clicking on this plus here and if it doesn't work like in this case, you just remove it first and then change this drop down to clips. And now if we hit the plus, we get the separate automation lane and we can automate the parameter in whichever way we want it. Do not automate the volume fader of a track because if you do, like I did here, you will not be able to freely move this later on as it is locked to its automation lane. And in many cases, all we need might be a little adjustment on this volume fader just to make the mix really good. But now, because of this automation lane, we will have to select all the nodes and then control their value, which I do not want to do. So I'm gonna delete this envelope and instead, we add a gain plugin like the kilohertz gain. 
and we can automate the gain in that plugin, freeing up the volume fader of the track. Do note that it doesn't have to be a dedicated plugin. You can use any plugin like even the stock Sonitas Equalizer if it has an output level parameter that can be automated like this. Just note that whichever plugin you are using as a substitute for the volume fader automation should be the final one in the plugin chain. While inside the piano roll, if we hit J on the keyboard, the mouse turns into this with which we can preview these MIDI notes. Nice, I'm gonna turn it off for now. And also, if you press tab on the keyboard, the playhead will move to the next MIDI note. If you hold down shift while pressing tab, it will move backwards. And that's it for this video. If you have any tip like this, then please do comment it down. And also check the other comments. You might find even more useful things down there. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.